something happened. A message came to my mind and it made so much sense. So while I was researching this scripture here, I learned that my internet turned off right when or around the time when I came to this scripture, I believe my internet turned off. How crazy is that? That is demonic. And I paid the bill as well, early, way early. So this normally doesn't happen too often. This is demonic. Like, around the time when this message came to my mind, later, the internet turned off. So now I can't upload this until my internet comes back. So I am going to have to look up the definitions. I have to look them up in my phone. So let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. So slack means, let's look it up on my phone, characterized by slowness, sluggishness, or lack of energy. Okay. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering, which is having or showing patience in spite of troubles, especially those caused by other people. But is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, let me focus on the bottom half. Something came to my mind, and let me tell you. Okay. Some people have cancer. Some people have diabetes. Some people have AIDS. Some people have asthma and so many horrible illnesses. Some people may have different types of pains in their body now. And you may say, why would God allow this to happen to me? How is God a good God for allowing these things to happen to me now. You may say, well, so many babies die. Why would God allow so many babies to die, so many people to die, so on and so on? Okay. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, Let's look up the word perish. I don't believe I told you the definition of it. Perish. Suffer death typically in a violent way. Violent, sudden, or untimely way. So perish can mean two things. You die or dying in sin then going to hell. So we have to look at the context. So what this is saying here, perish means dying in sin, then going to hell. So this is saying God does not want you to die in sin, then go to hell. So as I was stating, some people may have cancer, diabetes, and all that stuff there and ask why God is allowing kids to die 
and stuff like that. Listen. The main focus is that God doesn't want you to go to hell. Be honest. Be really, really, really honest. Before you received cancer, before you received diabetes, before you received all of these illnesses or pain, were you serving God properly? Were you paying any mind to God? Were you paying any attention to the ways of God, following his rules and regulations? Chances are no. Okay, we just said that God doesn't want to send you to hell. So how can he catch your attention? <laughs> he has to interrupt your life in some way or form. With the cancer or illness that you have now, is it true that you are paying more attention to the ways of God now? Because of the pain that you are having now, is it true that you are trying to change your ways now? Chances are, yes. So what you are going through it is connecting you to God or more with God or trying or you are trying to change your ways. So that cancer that you have, that diabetes that you have, that pain that you have is drawing you closer to God. So it is a blessing. It is a blessing to you. Kevin, you are talking crazy. How can sickness be a blessing to me? Because if you did not get sick, if you did not feel that pain, you would stay in sin and die in sin and go to hell. As we can see here, God doesn't want that. So he is going to try to get you to change your ways. So the pain that you are suffering now, your kid that may have died, that is drawing you closer to God. Now, is everyone going to accept God? No, of course not. But God has to attempt to do something to draw you closer. Man, I pray that this makes sense. So if you want that illness to leave, if you want things to turn out better for you, give God your attention, serve him, change your ways, perhaps then he is going to heal you. <laughs> what is the sense of getting so many people to pray for you when you are not willing to change your ways? Thousands of people can pray for you, but if you choose not to change, what is going to happen? Listen, back when I was a child, I hated church. I hated church so much. So many people prayed for me to change. Now, I believe I changed for a while, but I stayed back into sin again, or I changed for a while, but I went back into sin, yes. Now, there was a time where things got so bad to where I needed God's help. So I had to attempt to change. But only then, my point is, if you want things to get better for you, you are going to have to change. So that sickness that you have, 
That pain that you have is upon you for a reason. Listen, back when I was younger, I was much more fit than what I am now. But I was the most sick. <laughs> now that I serve God, I don't take any pills. I don't even take aspirin. If I get a headache or a pain anywhere, I touch where I am sick at or feeling pain. And I say to myself, I am healed right now in the name of Jesus. And I get healed. I don't take anything. Nothing. That is not a coincidence. And I used to have asthma. Bad. I believe back in 2006 or 7, I learned that I had asthma back then. And I suffered with asthma until 2000, I forget. But I said to myself, since I am serving God now, I should not have asthma. And I believe I talked about it in other videos as well, so you may have to check it out. But I don't have asthma. I don't claim to have asthma. I don't get asthma attacks anymore. Because I am not the way that I was before. I am not always sinning and doing evil. So let me stop here. God bless you.